Okay, welcome back. Now I'm going to do example two for entropy. This is also going to be a related question to the ice, but kind of different. This is now going to be a closed calorimeter. I'm going to take the 100 grams of ice and place it in a closed calorimeter. I'm going to assume no heat comes in from the atmosphere. No heat goes out to the atmosphere. But then instead of uh, exchanging heat with the atmosphere, it exchanges heat with another amount of water. It says uh, it's placed in a calorimeter containing 60 grams of water at 50 Celsius. What is the final temperature of the mixture and the change in entropy of the universe? So it's slightly different than example one where you're exchanging heat with the atmosphere who's staying constant temperature. Here you're exchanging heat with the liquid water, but then through the exchange of heat between the two, you're gonna see that the change in entropy of the universe is still positive, right? So you can have lots of other problems similar to this where you're putting in metal in there, you're mixing all kinds of material, and you should always be able to show that the change in entropy of the universe in these problems is always greater than zero. These are called calorimetry problems, right? So the change, uh, the amount of heat here, the change in entropy of the ice is gonna be what? The mass of the ice times the heat of fusion of ice over the temperature of the ice. Plus, after that, its temperature increases, so we do an integral, right? Mass of the uh, ice times the specific heat of water times integral dt over t, right? t initial to t final, okay? The change in entropy of the water is gonna be how much heat it took for the water's temperature to go down, right? So it's gonna be minus the mass of the water, specific heat of the water, t initial water to t final dt over t. Now, before we do this, the change in entropy question, we have to find out what is the final temperature of the mixture. So let's do a regular calorimetry problem. The heat gained by the ice must equal to heat lost by water. Just a regular uh, exchange of heat calorimetry problem. So the mass of the ice times heat of fusion of ice plus mass of ice, specific heat of water, times the final temperature, right? So remember that the initial temperature of ice when it melts is zero, so that the change in temperature is gonna be whatever the final temperature is, minus zero, right? And then the heat lost by the water is gonna be the mass of the water, specific heat of the water, times the initial temperature of the water is 50 minus T final, right? So then you just subtract the two. So then uh, I can bring the negative 60 TF to this side. I'm going to have uh, 160 TF, 3000 minus 79, I'm getting minus 4960. So that means what? That means I don't have enough water to melt all of the ice. So let's assume that you have more water because I want to do an actual case where the ice melts and turns into water and then its temperature goes up. So I can make 260 grams of water instead of 60 grams of water. So then that's gonna be here 260, 260. So then I'm gonna have 260 times 50 is 14 degrees. Okay, now we know that the final mixture, so what's gonna happen, the water is gonna go all the way from 50 down to 14. The ice is gonna melt, its temperature is gonna go from zero to 14. Okay, so what's the change in entropy of the ice? So the change in entropy of the ice, now I use the, the kilogram version, mass of the ice is 0.1 kilogram, the heat of fusion of ice is gonna be 3.33 times 10 to the fifth joule per, kilo, um, joule per kilogram, and then divide that by the temperature of the ice, 273.15, uh, or Kelvin, so the kilogram kilogram cancels, right? Plus the mass of the ice, which is 0.1 kilogram, times the specific heat of water, 4184 joule per kilogram, the kilogram kilogram cancel, and then you take the ln of. So let's write down the final temperature is 14 Celsius, right? But then when we do the ln we do 273.15 and then final temperature is going to be 273 plus 14 which is going to be 287.15 right 
<coughs> so then I'm going to take the ln of 287.15 over 273.15. Okay. So let's add both of those. There is 142.82. 142.82. One forty two point eight two joule per Kelvin. Okay. Now what's the change in entropy of the water? Okay. So the water's change in entropy, okay, is gonna be minus the mass of water, minus two point two six or kilogram, right? Specific heat of the water, four one eight four joules per kilogram. Kilogram, kilogram cancel, and ln of T final of the water, which is going to be the 287.15, 287.15. What was the initial temperature of the water? 50 Celsius, right? That's 323.15 all the way to 287.15. <coughs> okay, so 287.15 over 323.15. Okay? Now, here I don't really need to put a negative. Because if I'm doing the final temperature 287 over the initial temperature, the ratio of this over this will already come out to be negative. Or if I want to put a negative myself, then I'll put the initial temperature over the final temperature. So just don't put two negatives. That's the only thing. So either way, just remember that the final change in entropy of the water is negative because the final temperature is less than the initial. Joules per Kelvin. Okay, the other one came out 142.82. So you see, the water which it was at a hotter temperature, its temperature, its uh, temperature went down. But because it starts out at a hotter, hotter temperature, the incremental heat that it loses, which is the same as the heat that the ice gains, the incremental heat that it loses affects its entropy less than the incremental heat that the uh, ice gained, right? So it always ends up that the, the one that starts out hotter doesn't decrease its entropy as the one that starts out colder. So the total change in entropy of the universe is now positive still, right? Delta S universe is now going to be 142.82 minus 128.49. Okay, now imagine as if you wanted to separate these two. Take the 260 grams of water, separate it, raise its temperature all the way up to 50 Celsius, and then the 100 grams of ice, cool it down all the way and freeze it. You're going to have to do a lot of work. The change in entropy of the reverse process is negative 14.33 joule per Kelvin. You have to separate the two, heat up the water, 260 grams of water, and then cool down the 100 grams of ice. That's a lot of work that you have to do. It's possible, but very, very tough, right? So then, the, in order to do that, you, the change in entropy of the universe will decrease by 14.33, but you're doing work, which means your entropy is increasing, so the net entropy is always positive for the change in entropy of the universe, okay? So now you saw another good example of the change in entropy problem. Then next, I'll do a couple other examples.